Hello again, fellow Beach Bum Traders. Thank you for joining us for part two of our weekly trading game plan for the trading week of March 25th through March 29th. We're in part two of our weekly trading game plan. We'll be selecting our top swing trading stocks to watch, stocks in our bullpen, stocks on our shopping list. We'll also look at dividend paying stocks, our dividend payers, and also several option strategies that you can use to also generate income while you wait for your top swing trading stocks to watch to set up. So let's get started. So here's our Google document with our notes for part two of our weekly trading game plan for March 25th through March 29th. We keep our notes for our weekly trading game plans in publicly accessible Google documents. Our notes contain links to bonus videos, the tools and resources we use to select and watch our top swing trading stocks to watch. If you have not already seen part one of our weekly trading game plan for this trading week of March 25th through March 29th titled Make Money Trading in the Spring, we would highly recommend you also view part one as this contains our market analysis, our trading strategies, our trade ideas for this trading week. We keep all of our Google Documents with our weekly trading game plan notes in a publicly accessible Google Drive folder so you can refer back to the notes for part one as well as previous weeks and you can also find a direct link to that Google Drive folder in the description box below. So firstly we'll go over our trade updates for the week and then we'll look at these charts in Weeble. So our main trade for this week was on AEHR, AEHR test systems. We went long on AEHR on the 18th at 1422. We got stopped out of AEHR on the 22nd at 1466 for a small profit with an ROI of about 3%, which equates to a monthly ROI of about 23%. For this scalp or swing trade on AEHR, congratulations to all of our fellow beach bum traders who also profited from this scalp trade on AEHR. And as you'll see, we're also going to watch AEHR for another uh, op opportunities for a swing on AEHR again. You can also hear our quick due diligence on AEHR in the via the bonus link to this video uh, via our notes. Just a quick reminder, although I never recommend that anyone blindly follow us into or out of trades, if it would help you to get a real-time notification when we enter or exit a trade, you can get a real-time notification uh, of our trade entries and exits by joining our Patreon at any level. And I post uh, to our Patreon members, you'll get email notification uh, when we enter or exit a trade. Also, we have several channels in our Discord available to our Patreons. The first is a Thinkorswim Alerts channel. I have price alerts set up in Thinkorswim. When those get triggered, they get automatically posted to this Thinkorswim Alerts channel in our Discord. And then if we follow that up with a trade, then I would reply to that Thinkorswim alert so you can see when we went long on AHR after it hit, hit its 52-week uh, low and then when we got stopped out. If it's a trade not related to a Thinkorswim alert, then I would post that in the Trade Alerts channel in our Discord. And again, you can get access to those two channels via joining any level, level of our Discord. We also have an additional channel with automated real-time alerts available to our all access and vip patreons so it automatically generates alerts in that channel when stocks are moving up breaking out etc so you can hear how that works via the bonus link to that video in the notes and again you can get access to that additional automatically generated real-time alerts channel by joining our Patreon at the All Access or VIP level. And you can find links to our Patreon in the description box below so you can see uh, when MSOS was breaking out, 
when Lab D was breaking out, TECS was moving up, et cetera. So a great way to see uh, real-time movements in the markets um, on a daily basis, as well as sector rotations, et cetera. So if that would also help you, again, you can get access to that by joining our Patreon at the All Access or VIP level. Welcome, Ellen Krantz, Milan Todorov, Walter Lyons. Thank you all for joining us for this special Sunday evening edition of our part two of our weekly trading game plan. I'm glad you all got the notifications. I apologize for the, the change in schedule. As I noted yesterday, we uh, were attending a retirement, uh, much, much overdue retirement uh, party for uh, an old friend. So that was that was nice. But again, we're glad we were able to uh, get back and do our part two uh, at a time that's convenient for everyone. So I hope that helps. So now let's look at that chart for AHR and Weeble. So here's our trade. Here's AHR. So we'll zoom in. Let's see, we got in on the 18th, I believe, out on the 22nd. Yep. So. Let's find the 18th. So here's the 18th, about 1422. So right in this little dip area is when we got in. We held through the 22nd. So you see it rolled over on the 20, uh, 22nd, broke down through that support level, stopped us out. And again, it looks like uh, you know it might be uh, headed downward. So again, we'll be watching AHR for an additional opportunity to swing that again. If we zoom out a little bit, again, we can see that little dip up above the pivot point, down back below the pivot point. So we'll see if we get a retest possibly of that 1388 or that 1422 uh, type level, and we'll take another swing at AHR. Again, plenty of upside opportunity long term. So again, uh, we just see that little dip and it looks like it's bouncing off that long term support. So again, it looks good for another opportunities for uh, some additional swings. Yes, thank you, Ellen. Yeah, we had a good time and it was nice again to see some old friends that we haven't seen in a while. So now we'll talk about, uh, let me grab a quick drink and we'll go through our top swing trading stocks to watch watch list today. Then I'll go over my updates real quickly and then we'll also uh, look at those in our watch list Google Sheet and in uh, the charts in Weeble. Okay, so here's our updates to our top swing trading stocks to watch watch list. As we just noted, we're going to put AHR back on our watch list for another swing. And again, there's the link to our previous bonus link to our previous due diligence on AHR. Uh, we're still watching Boyle. Boyle is the leverage long on natural gas. Uh, we took, looked at the futures yesterday. And uh, it looks like it, it might be headed up. But if we do get a retest of natural gas uh, near that bottom of June 2020, around 151, 152, uh, we might take another scalp um, position and boil if it does run away. Um, if you're a momentum trader, uh, you could you could take the momentum trade. Again, these are pretty volatile. Boils the long, colds the short. Again, natural gas pretty volatile, so you need to be nimble. We've got FAZ on there. FAZ is the uh, short on the financial sector. Just an, another note, we're already long FAZ. Uh, it does look like uh, FAS rolled over, and we got a little dip in FAS, which is the long. So we got a little bump up in FAZ. We'll see if that continues. Uh, but there may still be an opportunity to take advantage of that short on the financial uh, sector as well. One we're adding back to our watch list that we had on a couple weeks ago is another semiconductor stock, HIMX, Taiwanese semiconductor stock. 
Uh, you can hear our previous um, analysis and due diligence on Hymex technologies um, via the bonus link to that video in the notes. Uh, it had popped up. We took it off the watch list as it had already run up, and it looks like it's uh, uh, rolled over and come back down. So we'll see if we can get another shot at uh, HIMX, uh, Hymex technologies. MP materials we've been watching for a while. It's This one's uh, kind of difficult to trade. It tends to trend down and then pop up pretty quickly, as we'll see in the chart. So we're trying to uh, catch MP materials at a good price uh, before it pops up. And again, you can hear our previous due diligence video on MP materials via the link uh, to this video in the notes. You can also find that on our Beach Bum Trading channel. We're long already TECS. TECS is the short, the bear on uh, the broad technology sector. Uh, we saw the technology components yesterday. Again, the broad technology sector um, looks like, you know, it's, it's at a resistance point, uh, rolled over a little bit, um, not quite as volatile as, as the semiconductors alone or the fangs. Again, with the fangs and the Magnificent Seven, there's uh, much more by the dip uh, supporting it. So we'll see if we can get a, a profit in TECS. Again, you can hear our video on how we use TECS and TECL to trade the broad technology sector via the link to that video. Just checking the chat. Alan's asking about corrections. Eventually, you know, we, we will get some some level of correction. That's you know pretty typical, pretty healthy. So, uh, but uh, markets can you know remain irrational longer than you can remain solvent, as the old saying, and they can, uh, as we saw. They've been uh, running along those uh, trending upward for some time, and that can continue. You can continue in an overbought state for you know an extended period of time, but eventually we'll get we'll get some degree of correction. Um, the last one on our watch list is wheat. We saw the futures in wheat uh, had come down. We had a previous profitable scalp trade on wheat. Uh, did uh, bounce back up. We'll see if we can get a retest of that bottom. The recent bottom in wheat is uh, 52.30. We watched that using the futures symbol ZW and TOS. So I've got a price alert set on that 52-week low on ZW and TOS. If we get close to a dip, close to that, we'd take another uh, scalp swing trade on wheat. So again, now we have a Google Sheet with our uh, watch list, our top swing trading stocks to watch watch list, as well as our bullpen stocks, our shopping list stocks, etc. And you can get access to that Google Sheet as well by joining any low level of our Patreon. And you can hear how you can use that Google Sheet uh, to how to watch our top swing trading stocks to watch via the bonus links to those videos um, in our notes. So as you can see in our Google Sheet, in addition to just the list, we also have price targets. We have uh, the risk reward profiles, optionality information, dividend information, etc. And then these white columns are based on Google Finance functions, so they uh, update in near real time. And then the highlighting shows us, you know, which ones are close to our price targets to maybe uh, focus on uh, for a very near term trade. So. Uh, hopefully this helps as well. And again, you can get access to that Google, Google Sheet as well by joining any low level of our Patreon. That gets uh, regenerated at the end of each day. And if I do make any uh, updates after that Google Sheet is generated, then I post that in a stocks watch list channel in our discord and again if you join our patreon you also get access to that so you can see uh, we'll talk about our bullpen stocks in a minute when i added himx to our watch list i posted that uh, in the stocks watch list channel in our discord
Let me grab a real quick drink and then we'll go over the um, charts for those stocks, our top swing trading stocks to watch, watch list in uh, Weeble. Welcome, Logan Flips. Glad to see you. Thank you for joining us. Just a quick reminder, if you're not already using Weeble, you can still get up to 75 free fractional shares of stock by opening your account, funding it with 25K or more. If you fund it with 20 or 5K, less than 25K, you get 20 free fractional shares of stock, each worth three to $3,000. Also, until I believe the end of April, I posted in our Discord, they're offering a up to 4.5% match on deposits in your um, IRA, your retirement account. So it's um, free money. So you can't uh, can't really beat that. So again, you know, we can find that in the Weeble trading platform. So you can find the details of that in the we Weeble trading platform channel in our Discord. So again, you can get 35 up to 4.5 match on deposits in your IRA account. So again, free money as well as free stock. So if you're not already using Weeble, probably be a great time um, to open your account. If you'd please use our affiliate link in the description box below, get all your free fractional shares of stock and also help support our Beach Bum Trading community, which we uh, greatly appreciate. Yeah, I agree, Walter, you can't beat it. Free money, right? Okay, so here's our top swing trading stocks to watch. I'm using the online browser version of Weeble. This is the stock screen, so I've got you know my different watch lists available. We already looked at AHR, Boyle, again, the leverage long on natural gas. Again, you want to use the natural gas futures price to determine the entry point there. Otherwise, as a leveraged ETF, it's going to you know, continue to deteriorate. We've been watching the financials. Financials have been extremely strong, but we do see that very near-term rollover. So uh, we're already long FAZ, which is the short, but again, this may be an, a good opportunity uh, to get into FAZ, short the financials. We may be seeing, you know, finally seeing the correction in that sector. Here's HIMX. So again, we had been watching this previously. It ran up, been, you know, had a couple pops. Now it's come back down. So if we can get, you know, a price down in this 530-ish area, 527 area, you can see it had these, you know, nice run-ups. So we might get a decent scalp out of this. And longer term, it's got uh, more upside. Again, you know, some tailwinds from the semiconductor sector. And again, you can hear our due diligence on HIMX uh, via the link to that video in our um, notes. MP materials, again, it was downtrending. You see how quickly it tends to bounce. So I missed that bounce again. You see it is downtrending, and then, you know, it started running right away. So it does look like it rejected off that uh, pivot point, might be coming back down. So we'll see if we get a, a retest somewhere near this 1272, 13. Looked like they're on level two. Looked like that 13 level is pretty good support. So uh, we'll see if we get another dip uh, to that level. But again, when it starts to move up, it moves pretty quickly. And I, I, I hate to chase. Also, if you notice, it um, looks like it, it during the, the mornings, is about until you know, 1030 or so, 
uh, is when it downtrends and then uh, later in the day sometimes it will bounce so see how quickly it bounced up um, that was on the Fed decision and it, it reacted pretty quickly and ran away pretty quickly on that Fed decision talked about the broad technology sector and we looked at that component so it looks like you know it may finally be somewhat rolling over been oscillating so again as we talked last week several of these technology components are ones that you could you know short-term swing trade scalp trade on these oscillations uh, with a pretty good regularity so if you're a shorter term trader a lot of uh, short-term opportunities there So again, here's wheat. We looked at the futures in wheat. It had come down. That 502 is a nice price level. We had you know scalped that little dip there, and then it looks like it popped back up. If we just get a retest back down to you know that 502 ish area, uh, but again, we watched the uh, wheat futures price in um, Thinkorswim to determine the entry point in wheat. So uh, look for that bottom again in the wheat futures zw at about 523.50 and then uh, look for an entry in weat ellen's talking about china popping up again uh, we typically talk about the leveraged etfs uh, to trade china we use yin long yang short uh, so again a number of our beach pump traders make good money uh, trading that pair uh, on china and we talked about that uh, yesterday as well. Okay, next we'll talk about our bullpen stocks. If you're new to our beach bum trading community, the concept of the bullpen stocks are ones that don't really have the swing trading setup that we prefer right now, uh, but it looks like they may in the near future. So we put them in the bullpen. Uh, revisit them periodically and if their setup improves and we put them in the game move them up to our top swing trading stocks to watch watch list and then go from there and uh, now we also have a tab in our uh, watch list google sheet so we can watch those uh, during the day uh, much much easier and uh, so can you using our uh, watch list google sheet so some updates the first is crt CRT we talked about, I think it was last week we took a look at, I think is an honorable mention. This is Cross Timbers Royalty Trust. Um, you can hear our previous discussion on CRT in last week's part, part two um, weekly trading game plan. We'll parse that out and release that as a separate video as soon as we're able. Uh, there's been some recent developments in CRT. It dropped precipitously. Uh, they had some excess costs, but um, nice yield. So we'll also look at the risk-reward uh, profile for CRT when we get to our dividend payers um, Google Sheet as well. And we put it in the bullpen. We want to see this bottom, get some support. Uh, but again, the uh, it's a nice monthly dividend payer on oil and gas properties. So uh, again, I just want to see it stabilize after, you know, some bad news, excess. I think they cut their dividend for this month on some excess costs. So somewhat of a turnaround play. Uh, yesterday, we looked at the Euro stocks market. We saw that the European market is, you know, running near a top. And we talked about opportunities to potentially short that market. So the long on the leverage long on the Euro, Euro stocks market that we watch is EURL. The short version is EPV. So if uh, URL is tops hit the resistance, we look for, to short that European market uh, using EPV. Again, it may run up for a while, you know, so we just want to see that rollover downtrend. And then uh, there's an opportunity to short using EPV. We're going to take LXU out of our bullpen. 
It's already run up. You can hear our discussions on LSB Industries. It's one we periodically have watched, but again, it's, it's run up, so we'll take that out of the watch list. Similarly for MSB, this is one we were watching for Steel, and it ran up as well. So, you know, we missed, missed those run-ups. Also yesterday, we looked at the Nikkei and the Yen, and we talked about that there's opportunities both to short the Nikkei um, and long the Yen. And the short on the um, Nikkei is EWV. The long on the Nikkei is EZJ. And I've got a, a alert set at the 52-week high for EZJ, which is 5502, 4502. So as we saw both of these in our ETFs Google sheet, so I'm watching both of those. Uh, they have been highly correlated, so uh, the Nikkei uh, tends to roll over and the yen goes up. Um, recently, we saw you know a lot of downward pressure on the yen, so. Um, We'll see if there's some opportunities in either of those. I would, you know, look at the risk reward profile of those two. And as we'll see, I've added those both to our bullpen um, Google sheet so we can see which one has the better risk reward at the at a given time and take advantage of that. You can hear our previous discussions on how to make money trading the Nikkei via the link to that video in the notes as well as on our Beach Bum Trading channel. So again, now you can see all of the bullpen stocks in the bullpen tab in our Google Sheet as well. So again, with the um, specifically in Japan, we can see the risk reward profile right now for EWV from a 52-week uh, standpoint looks better for EWV than YCL, which is on the yen. Uh, but again, as as things develop, that may uh, change. So if I update that, again, EWV, uh, longer term has a better risk reward profile, but very short term, YCL has a better risk reward profile. So again, pick the one that's uh, most attractive at the, at the time, uh, given your you know risk tolerance, et cetera. So Walter's got some additional input And uh, the Forex, yes, negative rates. They're, they're BOJs ending negative rates, so uh, causing additional volatility in both the, um, the Nikkei and the Yen. Also, they have had a tendency to support the Yen when the um, USD to yen ratio gets over 150, and the last I saw, I think it was in the 151s. So again, that would be another potential catalyst for YCL, is if they do come out and support um, the yen at all. Okay, so we'll look at those charts real quickly in Weeble. So I go to my bullpen watch list. And here's CRT, again, a precipitous drop. Again, they reported a cut in their dividend and also some excess costs, some of which it doesn't sound like they're going to be able to recover. So we see that, you know, severe plummet uh, in CRT. So again, I, I think that's an opportunity, but we want to see this stabilize again, you know, dramatic plummet. And we'll see, again, it's a nice dividend payer. Again, they're short-term. They've cut their dividend some. Um, but, again, longer-term, it's an oil and gas property, monthly dividend payer. So that's why I put it in the bullpen. Uh, we'll see where this stabilizes. And then possibly this might be an opportunity, again, for a turnaround if those uh, excess costs um, are, you know, a short-term problem. EURL, again, this is the long on uh, the Euro stock market. You see it recently made a new high. Uh, looks like it may have made a lower high. It's kind of bouncing between those support levels up there. So if it does roll over, 
then the opportunity would be to go short uh, with, uh, like it's EPV. Yep, so EPV is the short on Europe. So we watch EURL for the long and then uh, short with EPV. We talked about the uh, EZJ, which is the long on the Nikkei. Again, see it made a new high recently, but we saw, you know, saw previous time it made a high. We got a nice correction. So again, short-term scalp swings on the Nikkei when you see that roll over. I think there's some opportunity there, uh, again, using um, EWV. And then we talked about the yen. So the yen's the inverse of the Nikkei. We see it made a 52-week low recently and then bounced up, rolled over. So it's it's pretty, pretty low right now. So we'd like to see, you know, where's the bottom and uh, bounce back up in the, in the yen. And then we can long the yen. So I hope that all helps. Okay, I don't have any honorable mention stocks. I'll talk about the shopping list in a sec. Let me grab a quick drink and we'll um, talk about our shopping list. Take a quick look at our shopping list stocks in our Google Sheet. Okay, our concept of uh, shopping list, if you're new to our beach bump trading communities, we always recommend you have your shopping list of stocks that you always wanted to buy, uh, give it an opportunity, so that opportunity could be an irrational reaction to earnings, could be a correction in the market, uh, but again, we always recommend having a shopping list of the stocks that you want to buy, uh, given those opportunities. Again, we always recommend Again, not financial advice. We're not financial advisors. All of our content should be considered for education and hopefully some entertainment purposes only. Uh, but we recommend you stay away from zombie stocks, zombie companies. Again, we've got higher rates for longer. Uh, cuts get uh, interest rate cuts keep getting pushed out. It's going to put additional pressure on zombie stocks, zombie companies. If you don't know what that means, so uh, you can. Uh, hear more about that via the links to those videos in our notes. I want to come back to this um, biotech stock that Gerald Fitz asked about. I've done a little bit of digging into it, and I think that will take some time to discuss. So I want to jump ahead to our dividend payers. So if anybody in the chat has a dividend payer you'd like to look at, uh, you can please throw that ticker up in the chat. Again, we use dividend payers as another way to generate income while we wait for our top swing trading stocks uh, to set up. You can get access, 24 by 7 access, to our dividend payers Google Sheet by joining our Patreon at the All Access or VIP level. Again, we have a whole series of videos on how you can use this um, Google Sheet to generate your own schedule of dividend payers that meets um, your uh, risk profile and your income schedule. So again, you can use this to generate a schedule of your preferred dividend payers um, of whatever categories you like, risk profiles you like, uh, using our Google Sheet. So I'll just quickly go through a couple. Um, we're long APLY still, so that's on Apple, possible opportunity there. Uh, some of these I don't like big lots, they're still losing money. Uh, this one, BTG, I think they're losing money. That's a gold miner. 
here's CRT, so I wanted to focus on CRT. So again, we can see they go ex-dividend on the 27th, so that would be early this week. It's only paying a, a two cent now um, dividend monthly. So we can see a nominal yields about 12 percent. Uh, the net yield, so it's got had positive performance. So the performance for the year has been 14 percent in general. Uh, again, we saw that precipitous drop but it's still got plenty of upside. Um, so you can see the 52 week low is 1250. It did bounce up a little bit. So again, we'll be seeing if that bottom holds. And again, nice, looks like some nice uh, opportunities with CRT. Also, hopefully their dividend will uh, increase in the, in the future again. Dust is a short on gold. This is a mortgage REIT. It's again FAZ, short on financials. These leveraged ETFs, I don't think, are good candidates for dividends. Uh, here's some some uh, favorites. Uh, I haven't seen Easy Mike. I think he's on vacation, uh, but and I think he likes IEF, IEI. These are pretty stable on different parts of the bond curve. So there we've got three to seven years, seven to ten year. Uh, you can see the risk reward profiles are pretty low because they're pretty stable. Pay a decent dividend, but you can see the yield's pretty low, about 3%. So if you're looking for stability at a low yield, that might be something to consider. Here's another gold, and we just, uh, we've just we released videos comparing IGLD to GLDI as a dividend payer on gold. So you can uh, hear more about that. Iridium's a... Uh, they lose money. Uh, we're still long land. Uh, we have a video that talks about CLIP, LEG. Uh, they're losing money. Ricky Khan says he's in APLI. Yep, so are we. And we're going to hold that, you know, for the, the turnaround in Apple. Again, we talked about NUS. They're uh, losing money and have some issues. Uh, I looked at that one. I think that's pretty high right now. Uh, kind of watching TLT, TLTW uh, as the bond yields have gone up, bond prices come down. We're using the bottom on TLT to determine a potential and watching these yields. But you can see the net yields on both of those pretty poor. Right now, TLT is outperforming TLTW. We're also long TSLY. So, again, we bought that on the dip. Looks like it's uh, swinging back up. Again, possibly still some uh, good opportunities to get that monthly dividend payer. You can see the yields very high. Net yields high, adjusted yields high, so uh, pretty attractive. And I think there's still an opportunity to get into uh, TSLY at this point. So again, if anybody in the um, chat has another dividend payer you want to look at, uh, please let us know after the fact. If you're watching this video and you want uh, some feedback or you'd like us to do research on an additional dividend payer, please put that in the comments to the video, or you can always contact us via our Discord and also via any of our social media sites. So again, you can find a free invite to our Discord. Again, all of the other channels in our Discord are free to join. Our Discord's free to join, and you can also contact us via any of our social media sites on our homepage, uh, beachbumtrading.com, bum without the U. So again, uh, let us know if you'd like us to do research on a stock, dividend payer, um, et cetera. Okay. Um, our other strategy we use to potentially generate income while we wait for our top spring trading stocks to watch, 
to set up appropriately as several options strategies. So we sell covered calls when our positions are going up, buy them back when they're coming down. We potentially sell cash secured puts against stocks that are going down, buy them back when they're coming back up. And we use this puts ROIC Google Sheet uh, to identify potential opportunities to sell and then buy back puts. And again, you can get access also to this Google Sheet by joining our Patreon at the All Access and VIP level. I don't have any changes to this Google Sheet this week. Also, again, uh, for quite some period, we've seen the VIX is pretty low, so volatility is pretty low, so premiums on these puts is pretty low. So you can see in our Google Sheet, the ROIC, our target would be a 5% or better ROIC since we're getting 5% on our idle cash in our brokerage account. So, um, you know, anything below 5% is not really that attractive. So, again, you can use this to identify, you know, potential opportunities. Uh, also, you can see who's going up or down. So, in the terms of selling a put when it's going down it shows green when it's going back up it shows red so green would be the opportunity to sell uh, red to buy back or not sell so again uh, not a whole lot of you know five percent or better opportunities right now if there's anything you'd like us to take a look at you can let us know the stock strike price expiration date i go through this option seller roi tool um, daily and see if there's anything that we want to add and then our automated systems collect this options data and then update this puts our OIC Google sheet at the end of each day so well we can see if there's any uh, better opportunities showing up so Alan's asking about the, the proxy battle in Disney I personally, I don't have a whole whole lot of uh, comments other than, you know, it's going to cause volatility until that's resolved. Um, we did have Disney down in the 90s, sold it, you know, when it bounced back up. Right now, I think it's still uh, in the 110s or so, below 120. Um, again, I, I don't think you're going to get a whole lot of additional movement until that's resolved. Um I think uh, you know they'll probably end up keeping keeping uh, the current CEO, but that battle again will you know causes additional uh, volatility. If we do get a dip on Disney, as you'll see in our watch list, I didn't. I guess I didn't go over our shopping list. You can see Disney's one. So there's the last price on Disney was one fifteen. You can see some of the other stocks we have in our shopping list. I recently added APLY and TSLY, as those seem to be pretty attractive uh, dividend payers. So these are some we typically watch for, you know, like irrational reactions to earnings, which, you know, sometimes Disney, IBM's had them in the past. Also, we're always looking for opportunities to get into JPI, JPQ, we own land, some other REITs we watch, LTC, O, STAG, I added Pfizer, we've been watching that, see if it comes down, I think that might be a decent opportunity, again, uranium, oil, so you can see what's on our watch, uh, our shopping list, and, you know, we'll update that uh, if there's anything that I want to watch, and if we see an opportunity uh, there, we can uh, take advantage of that. Okay, I want to quickly, I haven't seen MD tonight, um, but he asked about a couple stocks in yesterday's live chat, both LU and VICI. So I want to take a quick look at those two, and then we'll go back to the biotech and talk about uh, the biotech stocks for a little bit. So just a quick reminder, you can also find links to all the tools that we typically frequently use on our homepage. So here's the link to Finviz. Also, there's a link to Chartmill, the FedWatch tools, etc. So you can find quick links to all of the frequent uh, the tools we frequently use 
also on our home page. So let me grab a quick drink and we'll look at this LU and VICI 4MD. Okay, so this LU is Lufax Holding Limited. It's an ADR out of China, so uh, financial credit services. So just a quick um, FYI, I wouldn't trade this as it's an individual Chinese stock, ADR. Uh, we haven't traded individual Chinese stocks for years due to the risks with these ADRs. So again, if you're looking for any kind of long-term hold, I, I personally would stay away from something like that. But we can see it, you know, popped up dramatically. So I had this huge gap up, way up above support. Uh, we'll see what the news was that uh, caused that. Then we see a pretty dramatic uh, correction. So yeah, some other warning signs. I see they had a split, a one to four split on December 15th. So obviously it was probably below a dollar and they had split it, uh, negative earnings. So they reported worse than expected earnings, had a negative surprise on revenue. So again, their earnings were poor, but uh, again, we had this huge pop up. There's got to be some news. Does look like they you know, have made money at some point, got a lot of shares. Not a lot, not a huge short interest. So I, you know, after their, their reverse split, they must have had a truckload of shares before the reverse split. Uh, you know, debts, not super high, but not great. It is optionable. So let's see what that news was recently that caused that big pop. Misses earnings, misses revenue. So wider loss. So I don't know why that would attribute to, you know, got a 45% pop on bad earnings, bad revenue. So it looks like, you know, some, some meme-ish activity or something it, it is a sizable uh, float for a stock. So I, I don't, I can't explain offhand without digging into that further. In the game, okay. Special dividend. Okay, so it looks like they announced a special dividend, and that is uh, the attributable to that pop. I don't see the news for that offhand, so it must be in their earnings report somewhere. So they got continued listing after their reverse split. So again, I think that pop is, is wholly attributable to the special dividend. So it's probably going to stay up there until the X dividend date on that special dividend. Um, and then, you know, that was a, a special one-time deal. So I would expect it to plummet, you know, after that X dividend date. You know, at least the amount of that X dividend, if not, you know, significantly more. So if you're already in it, you know, you're okay, collect the X dividend you know, or collect a special dividend. And then, you know, probably you're, you're going to probably want to get out technology empowered personal finance platform. Again, it's China, China stock. I, I wouldn't touch it. So, and again, since the pop was on a special dividend, um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect it to, uh, trend upward it'll probably you know stay flat and then drop uh when the x dividend date occurs so i i hope that helps if anyone else has any additional input on lu love to hear it again not something i would i would even consider next one is uh vici 
Beachy property, so I'm familiar with this. This is a REIT on uh, essentially gambling casino type stocks. Uh, it's a pretty popular REIT. You can see it pays uh, 41 cent. It looks like that's a quarterly. Yeah, it looks like a quarterly dividend. So it's a dividend paying REIT. Pretty high debt. It is optionable. Yields about 6%. Let me see if we have it. I don't think I have it in my dividend payers sheet. Yeah, it's not one that we really watch. But again, it is a popular REIT. Gaming, hospitality, entertainment. Again, it's a lot of you know casinos, golf courses. Looks, you know, relatively stable. Looks like their recent earnings were pretty good. So they beat on their recent earnings. So that's positive. You know, not a whole lot of, of uh, variability, you know, from 27 to 33 or so. Right now it's kind of in the middle, around 30. So risk rewards kind of one to one. Pretty, you know, volatile. So again, not, not a whole lot of uh, near-term risk reward, possibly longer term up to 36 or so. But again, it's, it's relatively high, so more potential downside risk than uh, upside. So again, if you're looking for, you know, a, a dividend payer, monthly dividend payer, a REIT on, you know, casinos, et cetera, if you like that thesis, you like that uh, industry, think it'll continue not uh, not to have any negative impact from you know tightening financial conditions on the consumer something to consider um, you know VT might be something that you know you want to hold for for the dividends you know it pays a decent decent dividend not not super great you know six percent it's not bad so the yearly performance slightly negative so and again, not not a whole lot of uh, potential upside. So the adjusted yields are you know, not going to be great. But again, it's it seems to be relatively stable for the year. So again, if you want to uh, use that as a REIT to collect a dividend, that doesn't seem uh, like a bad choice. Again, it's a popular REIT. Okay. Lastly. I want to quickly go back to the biotech stock that Gerald Fitz asked about, which is MBRX. So we have uh, developed a biotech due diligence Google sheet, which you can use to calculate the uh, quarter's cash flow positive for biotech stocks or uh, any money losing stocks. And again, you can use this, uh, either use ours or make a copy for yourself if you're an all access or VIP member. I've just plugged in the basics for MBRX, and we'll go through the exercise to figure out their uh, quarter's cash flow positive. We'll also open up their uh, Finvis profile, which you can do directly from the link there. So again, in the key, it will give you the formulas for calculating the variables in the quarter's cash flow positive calculation. So we need their cash on hand from their balance sheet. So we'll go down to the financials first. Go to their latest quarter. Go to their balance sheet, cash and short-term investments. So 23.55, we'll plug that in. Find their free cash flow. Cash flow statement. Find their free cash flow. Negative. 5.49, plug that in. Okay, 
and we'll see we get a 4.29 so they've got four quarters of, of cash until they essentially you know run out of money so it's it's not terrible to average so that's not a big negative we'll get their quarter quarter date So again, you can go through this exercise on any biotech or any money losing stock and figure out, you know, how long till they run out of money and have to raise cash. Now, I did look at this MBRX a little bit in advance. And some of the things to note right off the bat is they just did a very large reverse split. So they split one to 15. They also had earnings. So you see they're losing their money losing, which is typical of a biotech. And as we just saw, they've got about four quarters of, of cash left. Now, another thing, those splits, you know, a reverse split, in my humble opinion, on a money losing stock is always a red flag because typically, particularly a lot of these biotechs, they will um, reissue, resell those shares. And if you look at the news from that reverse split announcement, you will find that it, although it impacted the number of outstanding shares, they still have, so the outstanding shares went down to 2.2 million, but they're still authorized to sell 100 million shares. So again, at any point, they could resell those shares that they just got back from that reverse split and your uh, stock value could plummet. So again, you can see, you know, it plummeted, got a little bit of a bounce off of that uh, reverse split. You can see, you know, it has popped up on probably some catalysts, uh, but in general, you know, it's been severely downtrending. Get these pops, you know, if they were release positive news on a catalyst, um, you're going to get those pops and then, you know, quick drops. And also that's the point at the, when they typically do an offering is, you know, right after they release some positive news, get a pop and then they drop an offering on your head. Uh, so you, you need to be very nimble, so, you know, sell the rip, uh, get your stop in place and, you know, don't get caught in a downside halt or anything like that. We could see this MBRX is in uh, hard to treat cancers and viruses. So very difficult uh, f biotech fields. So uh, obviously if they release positive cancer news, that's they're gonna get a, a nice pop out of that. Uh, if they you know fail the trial, et cetera, it's gonna, it's gonna cut in half or, or worse. So that's just the nature of biotechs. If I just very quickly look at their pipeline, Let's see if we can get an overview of their pipeline, see what kind of phases they have. So they've got one in phase two. They've got two in phase two. Got one, in, uh, one two in phase one. So uh, it doesn't look like, you know, they're, they're not super close. And look at leukemia, sar sarcoma. Brain tumors. So again, these are these are tough. Uh, they'll get a nice pop out of any positive news, uh, but again, if they uh, fail any of these trials, you know they're going to get uh, severely punished, cut in half. Um, and it doesn't look like they have commercialized anything uh, at this time. So you know you're totally uh, at the mercy of their their catalysts. So you would want to know when the trial dates, um, when they're uh, meeting with the, what they call the PDUFA date, the meeting with the FDA is, et cetera. A uh, while back, we talked about where you can find these, um, the trial dates, the FDA data, and I put those videos in the videos tab in that due diligence um, Google Sheet. So again, you can hear, our discussions, you know, uh, what are the potential catalysts, uh, what are the risks, you know, and also our discussion on this, uh, how to use this due diligence sheet. So I would recommend go back to um, the video where we identified uh, the resources where you can find the trials for that particular company. And again, you're gonna wanna know when those trial dates are as those are the catalysts 
and you're either going to get a nice pop or potentially a, a severe drop, um, which is just the, the nature of biotech. So, um, Gerald Fitz, I hope that, you know, it, uh, starts to address your questions on MBRX. If anybody else has some experience with MBRX, um, please let us know in the comments and the Discord, etc. Again, if you know more about their trials, uh, when their catalyst dates are, uh, that would benefit all of our beach bum traders who might be interested again in MBRX. Again, warning signs, you know, the split and uh, the outstanding or the authorized shares is watch out for an offering um, at any time, particularly right after they release positive news and get a, one of these pops. Uh, you see how it, you know, popped up very quickly and dropped uh, right back down actually below the level where it popped from so again i hope that all helps if anyone else has any questions about any other stocks etc again you can put them in the comments to this video you can always contact us in our discord Again, please tag us. We're Beach Bum Trading, all lowercase, no other characters, numbers, etc. Anyone else is a, an imposter. You can always contact us via any links to our social media on our homepage. So again, if you'd like us to take a look at any stock, uh, do research for dividend payers, etc. Um, just let us know. Also, we'd love your feedback on how we can improve our weekly trading game plans or any of our other tools, our Google Sheets, our community, etc., cetera, uh, to add more value for all of our Beach Bum traders and help you make money trading, help you succeed in your trading career, uh, please let us know. Uh, we hope that you like this content. Um, we hope that you'll smash the like button. Help us get the YouTube algorithm to hopefully share our content with uh, more traders around the world. And we would greatly appreciate your help with uh, directly sharing our content um, with your fellow traders. Please repost our social media posts, etc. Directly share our content with other traders. We don't have a lot of luck with the YouTube algorithm, so we uh, really need and appreciate all of your help and support in continuing to grow the community uh, for the benefit of uh, all of our fellow Beach Bum traders. Again, if uh, you're not already subscribed, we hope you'll choose to subscribe and please hit the bell, uh, bell icon and select all notifications so that you're notified when we release videos. We try to release something every day. Um, and then we have the live streams typically on the weekend and next weekend we should be back to our normal 10 a.m. Saturday and Sunday schedule. So thank you to everyone who joined us on this special Sunday evening uh, session of our part two of our weekly trading game plan. And we hope you have a great week. Good luck and have a great trading week.